<laughs> Tacking up a sign or knocking down the depot? Very funny, Mr. Winslow. Have fun. Vote at 12.01. Hot ziggity. What's the matter? Don't you have poetry at Crabwell Corners? They don't have anything at Crabwell Corners, and that's why I came over here, to see what a real civilized town looks like. I'm not here because I want to be. My father made me drive him over so he could make a few election bets at the barber shop. Marbles, chalk, or bottle caps? <laughs> he is giving two to one that Crabwell Corners gets its returns to the state capitol before you do. Doesn't he know we've beaten Crabwell Corners in every other city in this state 20 years in a row? Well, what do we care if his father wants to throw away his money? Yeah. Come on, let's finish this. Now, what are we going to do about the hat? Uh, move the poster up higher. <laughs> Watch your fingers. Oh, God. Anything else I can do to help? Yeah. Get lost. I'll see you when we drive over to collect our winnings. In that case, we'll never see you again. Move it up some more. Where did that one come from? Oh. <laughs> That's left over from the last election. <laughs> Bacon powder, sugar, coffee. Is that all, Kate? No, there are a couple of other things I needed. Let me see. Uh, I know what it was. A jar of cucumber pickles. <laughs> cucumber pickles. Well, there's something else I need, and I can't remember what it was for the life of me. Salt? No. Cornstarch? Mm -mm. Flour? No. Kate, Sam. A tub of lard? Guess who's in town? Rock Hudson. Pip Winslow. That's a big letdown. <laughs> yeah, he's over at the barbershop right now. What, what, what's the matter? Ain't there a barbershop in Crabwell Corners? No, he ain't over there to get a haircut. He's making bets on the election. He's laying two to one that Crabwell Corners got their returns in first. And you know why he's so confident? They got an automatic voting machine. They got an automatic... <laughs> Who told you? I read it in the paper. I didn't see it. It was right under the help wanted ads. <laughs> Well, if we've got to compete against the voting machine, we've got to speed up our voting procedure. In the first place, we'll double ink the ink pad so that we won't have to pound it so much to get ink on the stamp. And then we'll... Uh, Joe, who put you in charge of election arrangements? Well, there ought to be no question about me being in charge. I do all the work. You do all the... Who gets all the signs printed reminding the folks to vote early? Sam does. Well, who sees the polling places open at midnight? Sam does. Well, he don't roust out the voters and see if they're in line by midnight. No. High school kids do that. I suppose they bring all the outlying voters into town to vote. Uh-uh. Floyd and Charlie do. But you keep on working at it, Uncle Joe, and you'll think of something you do. Well, I can tell you one thing he does. He gloms on all the credit. When it comes to humility, I ain't got no equal. That goes for bragging, too. You see these? These are newspaper clippings from the County Sentinel for the past 20 years. Hey. 1946, Joe Carson, genial manager of the Shady Rest Hotel, led Hooterville's voters to the polls last night. In 1948, brave in the bitter cold, genial, warm-blooded Joe Carson, manager of the Shady Rest Hotel, herded shivering Hooterville citizens to another victory. 1949. Joe Carson, genial and heroic manager of the Shady Rest Hotel, carried a woman across a swollen stream so Hooterville could get in its vote first. 1949. Wasn't that the year we had the big drought? Yeah. The only thing that was swole that year was Joe's head, as usual. Hauling in all the credit. All I did was call up the county paper and give them the facts as I saw them. And as you saw them, nobody else was worth mentioning. I could have mentioned everybody. Then why didn't you? Because it was a long-distance call and I didn't want to run up a big bill on your phone. Oh, well... My phone? You mean you charged all that limelight hogging to me? Here's your hammer, Mr. Drucker. Oh, I wouldn't put a thing like this in Sam's hand at this particular moment. <laughs> the chair declares that the Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club is now in session. 
Would any of you like to hear the minutes from the last meeting? Taken down in shorthand by my daughter, Billy Joe, and typed up real neat. <laughs> no. Um, would you mind putting that in the form of a motion less likely to make me lose my temper? I make a motion we dispense with reading of the minute. Which were taken down in shorthand by my daughter, Billy Joe, and typed up real neat. All those in favor, raise your hands. So ordered. Now, ladies, uh, we're meeting today to decide about the refreshments we're going to serve after the voting. I don't see why we have to serve anything. The voters have come to expect it. Now, Doris, last year you and Fred donated a ham. Can we count on that again? Fred's smoking the finest one on our pig farm. Good. Amelia will whip up some of her special baked beans, and I'll make the apple pies. Now, have I forgotten anything? My donuts. Oh, didn't I mention them? You did not. At the meeting after the election last year, we voted to suspend your donuts. I wasn't at that meeting. Kate Bradley, you railroaded that through when I wasn't here just so as my donuts wouldn't compete with your apple pies. That isn't true. You can't stand to have anybody oh and ah over anything except your soggy pies. Selma, you sit down. You're asking for the truth and you're going to get it. The reason your donuts were voted out was because there were so many complaints about them causing indigestion and insomnia. That's not so, Kate Bradley. If you don't believe me, ask Doc Stewart to show you the records of the house calls he made the day after election. Well, that's all the appreciation I get from this community. I don't see any point in getting out of a warm bed in the middle of the night just to stand in line to cast my vote. I'll vote at a respectable hour, like four in the afternoon. But, Selma, Crabwell Corners will beat us, and that'll ruin the whole 20-year record. Maybe it'll wake folks up to the fact that all these vote-early shenanigans are nothing more than a scheme to get free advertising for a certain party's hotel. Would you care to say who you mean by a certain party's hotel? And what free advertising am I getting? After every election, all the county sentinel mentions is how the voters were organized by the manager of the Shady Rest Hotel. They never mention the fact I make donuts. You ought to thank them for that. <laughs> Doris. Selma, it might look that way in the paper, but anybody who knows Uncle Joe... Knows he does what you tell him. You put him up the whole thing, exploiting the election for your own free advertising ends. It's time the voters got the wool out of their eyes. <laughs> Mrs. Bradley continued. As far as I'm concerned, Selma Plout, you can bake a whole slew of those donuts, eat them yourself, and then go jump in the lake and see if you come up. <laughs> Meeting adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe fun to us now, but I'm afraid Selma's gonna have the last laugh. If she doesn't get up at midnight to vote, Crabwell Corners is gonna beat us even without a voting machine. Crabwell Corners wins. That Tad Winslow is really going to be unbearable. Oh, I don't care about Tad Winslow. The worst thing is that if Crabwell Corners does beat us, Hooterville's going to have to go back to being just a plain, ordinary town. <laughs> Doggone it, it's a shame letting her spoil a 20-year record. Well... We may not be first, but at least we can get everybody to vote. Well, if they read their mail, they won't forget to vote. Hmm. Vote for whoses, don't vote for whoses, what to vote for, what not to vote for, and what the heck is this? Hooterville <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. We don't have a Chamber of Commerce. I ain't got enough to do. Now I gotta mail this back. Now, where the heck is my there ain't no such party at this here address stamp? <laughs> get your hands off that. That's U.S. mail. You could get ten years for tampering with it. I wasn't tampering with it. I just wanted to see who it was from. Well, it's none of your business who it's from. Well, you told me who it was for. Well, that's different, because there ain't no such party as a Hooterville Chamber of Commerce. Office of the Governor, State Capitol Building. Yeah, that, that looks pretty official. Hey, how come she's allowed to read it and I ain't? Because I like her and I don't like you. <laughs> looks mighty important, Sam. Um, can't you open it? Oh, no. Sorry, Kate. That's against regulations. What's more important, some stupid regulation or what's in the governor's letter? The only one who can open this letter is a Hooterville Chamber of Commerce. But we ain't got one. Well, you can always form one. Now, all in favor of forming a Chamber of Commerce, say aye. Uh, just a second, Joe. 
Are you sure this ain't gonna cost us nothing? I told you it wasn't. Yeah. All right, all right. How about you, Floyd? You in favor? Well, I'd like to study on this for a little while. Why? I don't know if there's enough commerce in Hooterville so we need a chamber. <laughs> maybe if we had a chamber, we could drum up some commerce, huh? Yeah, maybe we could. <laughs> okay, I vote aye. Good. I now declare the Hooterville Chamber of Commerce in business. <laughs> Postmaster? Yeah? You got any mail for the Hooterville Chamber of Commerce? <laughs> As the governor of this great state, I You ain't governor. He's just reading what it says in the letter that come to us, Chambers of Commerce. <laughs> just so he knows he ain't put nothing over on it. <laughs> Will you shut up? <laughs> As the governor of this great state, I would like to commend the citizens of Hooterville on the wonderful record they have maintained during the last 20 election years. About time somebody took notice of the things I've done for Hooterville. Besides hogging all the credit, what have you done? Well, for one thing, I formed the first chamber of commerce. Well, he did. Thanks, Kate. <laughs> Knowing full well that once again Hooterville will be first in the state with its vote, I am sending a bill to the legislature citing your city for setting a splendid example of good citizenship. How about that? Yeah, how about that? Can he send us a bill just because we've been good citizens? Oh, no, Floyd. The, the, it isn't that kind of a bill. You see, he'll send the bill to the legislature. And they're going to make us pay it? Oh, no. They... Forget it, Floyd. The governor better forget it, too, since we ain't going to be first again this year. I bet Selma wouldn't have been so upset if her name had been in the paper. Say that again. Say what again? What you just said. Oh, Say what again? <laughs> Floyd. Well, that's what I said. Floyd, I think you've given me the glimmer of an idea. Glad to do it, Kate. And you're always saying I'm stupid. <laughs> now, what did you have in mind, Kate? Well, I think that we can put this newly formed Chamber of Commerce to work. How do I look, Sam? Well, Selma, you better move over a bit so I get a little contrast between you and that sack of potatoes. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Uh, now, Floyd, you hand her the scroll, and Charlie, uh, you make the presentation speech. And while you're talking, I'll snap it. On behalf of the Hooterville Chamber of Commerce, we present you, Selma Plout, with this scroll, <laughs> naming you the voter of the year for your unstinting help and for donating your time and your donuts to getting the Hooterville vote out first, including the upcoming election. <laughs> it ain't right Charlie and Floyd getting their pictures took and hogging all the publicity. Look, Uncle Joe, this was the only way we could bamboozle Selma out of her sulk. Now, if you want to undo all this just because you want your picture in the paper, I'm sure the town will be glad to accommodate you. Just remember one thing. Keep your face to the camera so we'll see who's smiling at us through the tar and feathers. <laughs> Mom, I'm just about through. What do you want me to do next? Get another basket of apples and peel them. Takes a lot of apples to make 12 pies. Mom, I oh. can't find the pie tins. Well, that's strange. Had a dozen of them. Well, I guess if there's no pie tins, I don't have to peel any more apples. Stay where you are, Billy Joe. I'll find them. <laughs> What's this? I thought I told you to hide your bones out in the backyard. <laughs> Where are they going to be? Must be in here. How many of these did you hide? <laughs> this goes in the backyard, too. Ain't the pies baked yet? I can't find my pie tins. Women are just no good for organizing. In the past hour, I have dressed, ironed the ribbon on my badge, drawn a map of the valley for the places where Charlie and Floyd to pick up the voters, and packed the noisemakers for the block captains. What noisemakers? Oh, something new I ordered this year. Last year, the captains had a lot of trouble waking up the heavy sleepers. This year, we're equipping them with... New Year's Eve horns to blow and ratchets to whirl. And 12 of my pie tins to bang on. Go get them. The cave. Go get them. Now look what you've done. Curl my ribbon. Mm. You girls.
girl sure outdid yourself this year. No nibbling until after you voted. Well, uh, I got a friend on the election board. Who? You. <laughs> Selma bring her donuts in yet? <laughs> no. Maybe she dropped one on her foot and broke it. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. See my picture in the paper? Hooterville's voter of the year. Big as life. And twice as ugly. <laughs> well, Sam, help me carry these pies over, huh? Well, I guess you brought your donuts, huh, Selma? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Selma, you do make the louder, lightest donuts. <laughs> Sam, could you take these while I hang up my coat? <laughs> What the heck is going on out there? What are you doing in there? Taking this booth inside where it belongs. Well, there's no room for it in the store. It's gonna be too cold out here. Th then everybody will vote faster so they can go inside for coffee and refreshments. Look, I told Sam I wanted... What authority have you got to tell anybody anything? This authority. <laughs> Look. Curly, don't point that phony thing at me. I outbadge you. Wake up, Mr. Ducey. Okay, Billy Joe. Zero hour. Start waking them up. Everybody up. Come on, time to vote. Come on, Mr. Mrs. Larrabee, get up. Come on, everybody. Come on. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Ballots out, Sam. They're starting to line up. 11.25, right on schedule. It's 11.38. We'll be whistling from Millbank's farm in about a minute. Now we're two minutes behind schedule. We still got a lot of voters to pick out. How many we got in the coat so far, Floyd? Oh, 18, not counting Silver and his cow. <laughs> What'd you let him bring his cow along for? We had to. He wouldn't come without her. He had a choice between voting and milking. <laughs> Line's getting longer. It'll be halfway around the store by the time the cannonball gets here. If it gets here. It'll get here. Remember what happened last election? Charlie and Floyd were so busy arguing politics, they didn't even notice that the coach and tender parted company. I don't think they'll make the same stupid mistake two years in a row. He's a good man. Uh, says who? Says me. Oh, what do you know? Well, I know he's a good man. I'll leave it to Joe. What do you think? I think we lost the coach. <laughs> Charlie, easy. Thanks, Gilbert. You're the last one to vote. You sure? Positive. I checked. 
Folks, at exactly 18 minutes to one, Pooterville's completed its vote in 100%. Yeah. Well, Sam, all we have to do is tally up the votes and phone the results to the state capitol. Wonder how Crabwell Corners is doing. How things in Crabwell Corners, Tad? Pretty good, Mr. Carson, except the voting machine's broken down a couple of times. My pop sent me over to see how you're doing here. All over but the counting. What odds was your father laying, Tad? Two to one. That means he owes me 38 cents. <laughs> Are you sure? It's the third time I counted them. 142 ballots and 143 registered voters. Well, check the registration book and see who didn't vote. Well, who is it? The genial manager of the Shady Rest Hotel. <laughs> a 20-year record. Yeah, Crabwell Corners has finally beaten us. Hello? Collect. Let me talk to Uncle Joe. <laughs> okay, we'll accept the charges. <laughs> Uncle Joe, where are you? I'm at the voting place over here in Crabwell Corners, rubbing in our victory. Yeah, the voting machine broke down again. There's eight people still waiting to vote. Yeah, you ought to see. They got the machine all apart, springs, gears, bolts all over the floor. Uncle Joe, how long is it going to take him to fix it? Oh, about an hour, but that don't make no difference. We've had our tally in for... What? You didn't vote. I didn't? No, you didn't. And now you better get back here and vote before that machine's fixed. Or else you'd better put in an application to be the genial manager of the Crabwell Corners Hotel. <laughs> Uncle Joe! It's ten after six. Any coffee? What took you so long? I had to walk back. Why did you even bother? So I could vote for Sam. He's in the back asleep. Well, wake him up. Let him sleep. You can vote later. Well, if I vote now, we can still beat Crabwell Corners. They won't have their voting machine fixed until noon. They had to send all the way to the county seat for a cycloid gear. A, a what? Here. One of these. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> Uncle Joe! Watch it, Kate. You're curling my badge. Oh. What badge? How do you like that somebody swiped it? <laughs> it just goes to show you you can't trust anybody. <laughs> This has been a Filmways presentation.